SwiftUI gives us a range of functionality to render colors. It manages to be both simple and powerful at the same time, which is a hard combination, but one it really pulls off. To try it out, let's create a Z stack with a little bit of content inside. We'll say Z stack with text of your content. Nice and simple. Now, if you want to put something behind the text in the Z stack, we're going to place it above it inside the Z stack. But what if we wanted some red behind there? Let's make the whole background red. How do we do that? Well, there's one modifier just called background, which is for this purpose. We can say dot background dot red. And that might have done what you expected. Maybe you thought you'd see exactly your content, but there's a good chance also it was a surprise. Only this text to you has a red background, even though we asked the whole Z stack to have the background color. In fact, there's no difference between this code, background red in the Z stack, and background red in the text like this. This is because the Z stack automatically fits its content. Now, if you want to fill the whole area behind the Z stack, what we want to do is treat that red as its own view. By I can just color dot red like this. Boom. And this color red is actually a view in its own right. We can just draw text, shapes, colors, boom, as our own view and mix them up freely. Now, when we had before uh, background dot red, I didn't have to write color dot red. Right? I could say dot red because Swift UI could figure out, well, it's background. What else is it going to be? Of course, it'd be a color or uh, some other kind of view. Um, whereas now I can't just say dot red because that doesn't mean anything at all. That could mean what's dot red, right? You've got to be explicit here, color dot red. Now colors, as you can see, automatically expand to fill all the available space, which is why the whole thing has gone red. But we can also apply a frame modifier here to limit the size of this color. For example, I might say I want a frame width of 200, height of 200. And now the red occupies that exact space. You can also specify minimum and maximum widths and heights, depending on the layout you want. For example, we could say, I want a color that is no more than 200 points high, but for its width be at least 200 points wide, but can stretch to fill all the available space. So for this one, we're gonna say, I want a frame with a min width of 200, must be at least that size, a max width of infinity, so grow to the full width, and a max height of 200. So now it's flexible. It understands it can be at least 200, but can grow upwards to fill the full available space, but don't go smaller than that. Now, Swifty UI gives us a whole bunch of built-in colors. This is red. Just do color dot. You'll see there's blue, white, gray, green, da, da, da. A few nice ones down here, like indigo, for example. There's mint. It's quite a nice one. Um, there's a whole bunch of these things with built-in colors here, and they look great in light and dark mode. There are also some semantic colors. These are colors that don't really say what they contain, but instead describe their purpose. For example, when we say color dot primary, we're gonna get black. But if I run this code back uh, in the simulator, even though it's quite simple, we'll see a big black box inside there um, when it finally runs. Come on, you can do it. Boom, run, super fast Mac supposed to be, lots of RAM. There we go, big black box. If I press a helpful keyboard shortcut, Shift Command A, it flips between light and dark mode. You can see the black becomes white automatically. This thing doesn't have a specific color of black or white. It just means use whatever makes sense for text, the primary color in this layout, which is why this is black in light mode, but white in dark mode. It flips around automatically. You also find color.secondary. This thing will appear, I'm gonna preview again. It'll appear slightly translucent. Now that's not actually gray, it's black with some translucency. So if there were a color behind that, it would start to shine through. If I do like background.blue for the whole Z stack, for example, you now get a sort of steel blue color behind there, because secondary has black with opacity, backing onto the bright blue. So, 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 that's colors. 
Now you can see there's built-in ones like red, green, blue. Uh, there's semantic ones like secondary, primary, and so forth. A whole bunch of those to work with. In fact, you just scroll through and find them all because there's a whole bunch of them. Um, but you can also make your own. You can just say color with say red of one, green of 0.8 and blue of zero. And you'll get this nice sort of gold color. However, regardless of what color you choose, when it's told to expand all the available space, you will notice that it leaves some things white. How much is left white depends on your device. This is the iPhone 15 Pro uh, canvas and simulator. And so on mine, it leaves this space at the very top and very bottom. This is where the uh, little capsule dynamic island is, lives there. At the bottom is the home indicator. That's that long blue line down here. This thing, so you can switch the app smoothly and so forth like uh, that, boom. Um, but really what's happening here, it's kind of trying to avoid the rounded corners of the screen. So it's put that blue, uh, yellow color, sorry, expanding outwards, uh, but leaving the unsafe areas, these rounded areas here, where your contact will be clipped by rounded corners, it leaves those out. Uh, this middle bit, the actual goal bit you can see right now, is called the safe area, where it's safe to show content. You can just draw freely into there without worrying about parts of your text being clipped off by the corners and so forth. Um, if you really want to expand to fill the available space, you can do so. You can add a modifier, which is ignores safe area. And that will tell it just, just grow fully, occupy the full screen like so. It'll run edge to edge, including under the rounded corners and so forth. But it's really important when you run your code back, everything that matters should be inside that safe area. No important content should be outside the safe area because it's hard, if not impossible to see it, right? It's under the clock or the like, island or who knows what here. And uh, Switchwire is very clever here, actually. In fact, UIKit and iOS generally is very clever here. If you have views like list, for example, they detect the safe area and move their content down below it. But as you scroll, it will go under the safe area. So it uses the full space of the screen very, very smartly. Now, in this case, this big gold uh, background here is just decorative. There's no important stuff in there. That can extend edge to edge just fine. Before we're done, there's one more thing I want to show you, which is that as well as using fixed colors like uh, red and green and so forth, the background modifier you saw earlier can also expect, uh, accept materials. Materials are um, effectively a frosted glass effect on the screen, which blur whatever comes behind them really nicely, creating these beautiful depth effects. It's used a lot in iOS. See this action, we're gonna um, upgrade our little Z stack a little bit. So we're gonna say a Z stack here with V stack spacing zero. In there will be color.red and color.blue. So it'll expand to fill full space, half and half like that. I'll add in ignore safe area again, so it goes edge to edge. And our content here in the middle, I'm gonna say has a foreground style of secondary. So slightly translucent, has a padding of 50, so a space around it, and then a background of ultra thin material. And you get that. Now I'm gonna run this thing back and you can see it yourself nice and big in the screen. What you're seeing here is a little bit of the red at the top and a little bit of the blue below, but blurred. So it's a frosted glass effect here. It's really, really, uh, small. There are multiple materials available. Ultra thin is the thinnest one, as you might imagine. There is uh, regular and thick and so forth, and ultra thick. Um, but it's, it just lets a little bit of the background shine through so you can see what's happening here. And it automatically adapts to light and dark mode. So if I toggle again, Shift Command A, we get the dark mode version and light mode version like that. So it adapts automatically very, very nicely. There are other thicknesses here, they work very well. Um, but really, what I want to look at is the text. If you zoom in close to the text and have a look at it, you might notice this isn't really gray. It's, it's showing through a little bit of red, a little bit of blue again, but it stands out nicely against that material here. Um, it's not a lot, just a little tiny little hint of the color behind it. But when used effectively, this thing really helps make a beautiful effect that helps the text stand out regardless of what background it's on. 
Now, Apple calls this iOS effect vibrancy, and you'll see it used a lot in their system.